Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Yes, it's been five months. I'm very sorry. I've just been super busy with my life and I've also been working on some new projects. I hope to share some of them to this YouTube channel soon, so you will be finding out what I've been doing in the past five months, hopefully. Hopefully it does not take me another five months to upload that. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm gonna try and be active this December. Enough talking about my channel though. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the newest Windows 11 23H2. Yes, I know, I'm two months late or something to making this video. Again, I've been busy and kind of procrastinating a bit as well, if I'm going to be honest, if I'm being honest. And I'm kind of glad I waited because I can tell you something I discovered in the months that I probably wouldn't have spotted if I did this as soon as 23H2 came out. So actually, I'm kind of glad I waited. Anyway, we're going to be taking a look at its new features and I'm going to be reviewing this system a bit. I'm going to try to keep this video short so it's not boring. And I just want to keep this fun, and I want to be myself in this video, so we're going to take a lighter approach to this video. I hope you like it. So we're going to be taking a look at feature number one, and that is Copilot. Microsoft's replacement to Cortana. And yes, as you can see, I've been messing around with it a bit, because I was on that menu. But some things it can do is change your theme from like light mode to dark mode, or dark mode to light mode, so we're going to try that first. Not very. I mean, why can't I just do it itself like it showed in the advert? Alright, so we've got a little pop up saying turn off dark mode, so I'll click yes, and well, it turned off the dark mode. Pretty cool. I just kept the dark mode background, which looks a bit weird on light mode, in my opinion. But it's alright. But it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. I thought it would uh, change it automatically. I wouldn't have to click a little dialog. We're going to turn dark mode back on. Turn dark mode on. And sure enough, we've got dark mode back. Honestly, I don't see the point of using that because you have to press Windows C or you have to click this button. Then tell it to change. Wait a second, yes, I spelled change wrong, oops. In my opinion, I think it's easier to just do this. But that's not the only thing we can do. We can turn on Do Not Disturb, which just stops notifications coming through. Once again, it requires one of these confirmation things. And well, Do Not Disturb should be on. Yeah, it is. Good turn it off though. Now let's start with the screenshot. And that just opens the sniffing door. Okay. Again, I don't see much point. Just press the print screen button and it's much quicker. Since it runs on the same thing as ChatGPT does, GPT-4, it can do basically what ChatGPT can, but it does have some add-ons such as the ability to search the web, which normal ChatGPT doesn't have, so that's neat. This is using the same thing as the Bing GPT, I'm pretty sure. That's what I call it, that's what I like to call it, Bing GPT. I don't know the actual name, I think it's called Bing Chat, but I call it Bing GPT. Right. XP because I love XP. This just seems like it was copied off Wikipedia to be fair. Let's use one of its other hyped up features. It requires Microsoft Edge. Go on to the superior search engine that doesn't leak your location. Let's go on to Windows XP Wikipedia. Summarize this website. Allow. Now these two work together. Interesting. But once again, I don't see the point of having this because Edge already has Copilot built into it and it can do the same thing. See? But can it do this? Nice, it can. So it is basically just like an assistant like Siri, but 
supposedly better. I don't think it's better, but it knows more knowledge, I'm pretty sure, than something like Siri. This has basically replaced Cortana. Windows 11 still ships with Cortana, but Cortana's dead. For lack of a better word, she is dead. Wait, what? Wait, what? She's not dead? Hey Siri. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore, sadly. When did 11 kind of trick me there? I thought they brought back Cortana for a second, but no, she's dead. Look, let's update it. Now she's dead. You see, I don't get why Windows 11 is still shipping with Cortana, because Cortana's dead. It's Microsoft. I'm sure they'll remove it eventually. It's still Windows 10 too in the same state. When I was setting up for this video, I couldn't get Copilot to work. And that's because I was doing the Microsoft account bypass. As soon as I signed in to my Microsoft account, the Copilot showed up. Anyway, we're going to go on the next feature, which is Dev Home. This one also requires a Microsoft account, as it does not show up without one. These preview apps all seem to require a Microsoft account. Well, I don't know why they're including preview apps with the final build of Windows 11. It just seems they're quite they're messing around Windows 11 quite a lot. And a dev drive this is what I want to look up. Using a virtual hard drive or a physical drive. But I'm going to use a virtual hard drive. Because I don't feel like connecting a real hard drive to this virtual machine. We'll just make it 50 gig because that's the minimum. There was not enough space. Yes, now I've got two dev drives. This is the one that was created properly. Because it has space used on it already, this one was not created properly, this one was. As you can see, the official dev drive is using the ReFS file system. As you can see, a normal VHD would use the NTFS file system. Something cool I like about this app is the widgets. So let's go ahead and add some. Microsoft went with some pretty nice widgets. We have extensions too. I have installed this Dev Home Azure extension, which is for Azure. Let's get Dev Home GitHub extension. So it seems directly getting it from the Microsoft Store seemed to work. Now let's test it out. I'm going to sign to GitHub. All right, I'm in. Mention me. I'll pin it. Wow, I'm sad. <laughs> nah, I better use GitHub. I'm just kidding. We'll do this one because I was involved in this. So here's the GitHub widget. As you can see, it works actually pretty nicely. We'll click on that and it will just open in GitHub. And this is the first time I got this working. When I was making this video before, it was not working. So it's good to see they fixed this app. It would just keep crashing. And this would freak out. We've got to like 300% CP usage. Like what the fuck? Anyways, on to the next feature. The next new feature is a new file explorer. It has this new kind of animation when opening for the quick access favorites and recents. Looks quite nice to be honest. It also has a new address bar and search box or search bar actually I should say. Could be both I guess. Uh, it has a new details pane which has some quite nice new icons. We've got like downloads, documents. Looks pretty nice. And also, if we search for something, let's search for the Windows folder. You'll notice that this has a new loading animation. Long gone are the days of the green bar in the address bar. Rest in peace. Personally, I quite like this. I just hope they don't add any more bloatware to this, because, yeah. They also added this new feature called Gallery. Which you can select what photos you want here if we go to Collection and Manage the Collection. It's pictures right now, but you can add other folders if you want to. We can copy that to the desktop. And I'll show you a little example, for if you will. I'll go back to the Gallery folder, I can just change my collection, I can remove all this. And this is basically what it would look like when you first set it up, if you don't have like OneDrive or anything like that. You can add your folder so it shows the same thing as it does when you go in collection. So I'm going to select my Windows Wallpapers folder. And if I give it a little refresh, there we go again, the pictures are back. But it would show whatever pictures you have in that folder, which are these in this case. 
You can also import photos from your phone, but this requires the OneDrive app on your phone, so it's kind of weird. But I do like this little gallery feature. It has, it has a similar timeline feature to the Photos app in Windows 10 and Windows 11. The next new feature I want to show is something that I'm actually quite glad they brought back. Uncombined taskbar icons. Would you look at that, they brought back a feature from Windows 10 that's existed since like Windows 7 or something. LIZ TRUST! But yeah, they've brought back the uncombined taskbar icon. They're bringing back more customization options to the taskbar. But please, Microsoft, bring back all the features in at least 24H2. I'm talking about the movable taskbar and the small taskbar icon, because I'm a big fan of the small taskbar icons. See? I use them on my host computer. I l love the small taskbar. Anyway, non-combined taskbar icons isn't really my thing. I'm just glad they brought back the feature to do so because it's customization. Any customization is good customization, I think. Windows 11 23H2 has a new volume mixer right here. We play a video. We can control edges audio separately, see? I don't know why it's glitching out like that. It's probably a VMware problem, but as you see, this works. And then more volume settings takes us to settings. I will miss the classic volume mixer though, rest in peace. Windows Backup is another feature that came with Windows 11 23 H2, although you can actually use this on older versions, and even Windows 10, but we can back up our Windows 11 23 H2 virtual machine, maybe, you can also use sync for automatic backups, there we go, partially backed up because of the dev drive, but what this does basically, it just uses OneDrive to back up everything up. And when you sign into OneDrive on another computer, it will automatically restore everything. I'm pretty sure that's how it's meant to work anyway. Although I could be wrong on the last bit. But I know it's using OneDrive to sync everything. You're going to have to pay for OneDrive storage if you actually want to use this. Because 5GB is not enough for anyone. But it basically just makes using OneDrive a bit easier on a Windows PC. As you can see, this stuff has been synced over from another computer, which is pretty nice. This is from another Windows 11 system I was testing this on and all of this has just been synced over. The next new feature is support for 7-zip and RAR files. Let's make a zip file to show you. If I just rename this that I've just made to RAR. So as you see, we do have a RAR file here, but we can't actually add anything to that. It's kind of half assed this feature, which is a bit of a shame. So we've got a RAR file from my computer. As you can see, we can open that. We can also go ahead and extract this like that. On previous versions of Windows you aren't able to extract RAW and 7-zip files. I do think it's quite nice that you can extract these because I can just copy a RAW file or a 7-zip file from my computer to a test machine without having to actually install any software so that's pretty nice but unfortunately I can't add anything to that which means it's just kind of shit in my opinion. If I just make a normal zip file I can add stuff to that easily. Hopefully they'll let us actually add things in the future. Also, you cannot make RAR files, you have to have existing ones or rename a, a normal zip file, as you saw here. At least they're adding something, but it's half arsed and I don't really like that. And that's how Microsoft is leaving a lot of things at the moment half arsed, which is kind of a shame. We're going to look at one more feature, and that is the new paint. We've got layers, which is pretty nice. The layers, you can have multiple layers. It's going to be just like a professional photo editing app, like Photoshop or Paint.net or something like that. Layer one is going to be this. We're going to make a new layer. And I'm just going to... Oh, it's another smiley face in blue. And we can move these around, obviously. As you can see, I can't see that one because it's a transparent background and this has a background. But basically, I can just cover... As you can see... As you can see here, removing that white spot will now reveal the blue. Oh, and yeah, this is also a good time to mention that MS Paint finally supports bitmap images properly. As you can see, I can finally make a proper transparent image. In fact, let's delete this. If we can have a transparent image, let's do another layer. We can do another layer. We've got three smiley faces. We can move this one down. We can also hide this one. See, green is gone, but if I had this one, red and blue are gone. So this finally has proper layering support, which it should have had for years. Another feature is co-creator. This also requires a Microsoft account. Oh yeah, and the layers feature also requires a Microsoft account. The new paint requires a Microsoft account. 
because if I set this up without a Microsoft account, the new features don't show in the dark mode doesn't work, which I found a bit weird. Anyway, here's co-creator. We can make 8-bit computer, I don't know, just something random. And your points are linked to your Microsoft account. I don't know how you get more of these, to be honest, but as you can see, here's my Microsoft account that is required for Paint now. Yes, we've entered the days of needing a Microsoft account for something like Paint. Next thing you know, you're going to need a Microsoft account for Notepad. Actually, I shouldn't really give them any ideas. Shit. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you can make AI generated artwork, which I'm personally not a fan of the feature, but it can be cool to mess around with, I think. Yeah, I'm just not a big fan of AI art in general, to be fair. And no, it will not generate, well, you know what. No, it will not generate that, you know? You know what I mean. If you can guess what I typed in the box, leave a comment. Personally, I do like the layers change in MS Paint. I don't like the fact that there's AI in it though. If it can be ported to Windows 10, though, that would be nice because I do want layers in MS Paint, although I don't use MS Paint much. It's just a cool thing to have. And those are all the features. Now, what do I think of it? I think it's very similar to Windows 11 22 H2, besides from the new features. Personally, I don't like many of the new features because I don't like AI stuff that much. Well, I don't hate AI, I just don't like it being shoved in my face, if you get what I'm saying. But one thing I did like was that new gallery feature, because it does look quite nice. And I do like the new Explorer. The Explorer looks quite nice to me. And I love the fact that they've updated paint finally. I don't like the AI stuff, but once again, the layer stuff was pretty cool. But I'll show you one thing I don't like about this new version that really, really angers me. Let me show you something. This is Windows 11 Pro version 23H2, build 22631.2428. What's wrong with that? Well, nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. Let me show you what the problem is. I'm gonna need command prompt for this. So we've got to enable test mode for this, or test signing, whatever you want to call it. But I've enabled it right here, and we've got to restart the computer. So we'll do that. We'll sign in. The right pin. Do you notice anything? Yeah. Build 22621. They haven't updated this in the registry, which I find really stupid and funny at the same time and lazy if we take a look in winbar they've updated this but they haven't updated this which is just weird how did they forget to change this registry value 22631 22621 build 22621 is windows 11 22 h2's build so microsoft forgot to change that oops but it just shows that they're getting lazier and lazier with each release which is really bad What's my conclusion and will I be upgrading to this? No. My conclusion is that it needs more work still and no I will not be upgrading to Windows 11 yet. I'm waiting for 24H2, hopefully they would have improved it enough for it to be usable by then. Notably the taskbar, I want small icons back and I want um, movable taskbar back. So that's my number one request Microsoft. Bring back the small taskbar icons please. And also bring back all the options that showed up on the Windows 10 context menu here. Thanks. Please do not shove AI in our face. And maybe also give us an easier way to not use a Microsoft account. Oh look, this moves with it. I find that kind of funny, look. And Copilot, from what I've heard, isn't very stable. I've heard it's been having issues with computers with two monitors. I can't test that right now because I don't have a computer with two screens to try it on. See, so yeah, that's my conclusion on Windows 11 23H2. It's not much better than 22H2, to be honest. In fact, I think it's a little bit worse. At least it's not too much more buggy, which is a good thing. It's not another 21H2, that was a mess. Anyways, with that, I'll see you guys later, and goodbye.